TCU Horn Frogs. They're undefeated at 6-0. Actually, a 10-game winning streak going all the way back to last season. There's the TCU Horn Frogs in their road purples. Your officials are Gary Maxwell, Kelly Self, and Rick Crawford. And we're underway with the visiting Horn Frogs controlling the opening tip. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by K Jewelers. Seven games in, Jamie Dixon has already started 10 different players, Fran. They missed their first shot, and here's Cunningham with the ball. Watch the power to the basket. It's a little different when you got Kevin Samuel in the middle there at 6'11, the all time shot blocker for TCU. Here's a look at the Cowboys starting lineup. Cade Cunningham and Isaac Ice likely make up one of the most dynamic backcourts in college hoops. Two of the youngest teams in college basketball, Rich. That's what's so much fun about watching these teams. And we have our first turnover with about 30 seconds gone by. It's going to be TCU basketball. We said that Oklahoma State is 6-0. TCU off to a pretty good start, too. 5-2 in Jamie Dixon's fifth season as the head coach of his alma mater. Coming off a destruction over the weekend of Texas A&M and Fort Worth, really impressive. RJ Nebhardt, number 22 in purple, throws it out of bounds. He's the third leading scorer in the Big 12 coming in. Well, we definitely have a decidedly uh, Dallas-Fort Worth uh, field tonight. As you see, Mike Boynton, the terrific young head coach, fourth year. Brooklyn, New York native. Mike wearing that John Thompson towel. Pay homage to the Hall of Famer who passed away earlier this season. And he talked about that win streak, Fran. They really struggled at parts last year, but Mike and the company turned it around at the end of the season, now with the third longest active win streak in college basketball. It was a tale of three seasons last year, Rich. They were 7-0. Uh, early ranked and then Isaac likely uh, contracted mono Late in the year they got back their mojo and they were very good and This guy with the ball likely is a linebacker playing point guard. Yeah, he is running downhill every time he gets his hand on the ball Shot goes in and that's the first points of the game. Oklahoma State up three zip TCU is gonna shoot a lot of threes tonight and certainly Oklahoma State aware of that Just about everybody on the roster except for the big fella Samuel can knock him down from deep A lot of deflected basketballs in the first two minutes of play both of these teams Trying to get at it and get in each other's jerseys in the early going and as you mentioned We'll expect to see a lot of that Fran because there's a lot of players on the floor at any given time Very familiar with themselves from that Metroplex area. No doubt about it. Well, three straight possessions with a stop for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. They call that a kill, Fran. That's part of their defensive mantra. If you, they, they want to average six kills a game. It's something that motivates your team defensively. You talk about it in TV timeouts. And certainly a lot of teams use that. And, of course, defense is in the DNA of this program, going back to the late Mr. Henry Iba. Here's Mike Miles tried his first shot, but it's deflected out of bounds. Well, we talked about the kills. It's part of a bigger goals board, and a lot of teams have things where they write the intangibles down, deflections, things like that. This is at the core of what Mike Boynton wants to do defensively. Well, they're undefeated so far, and they've reached their goal for the sixth time, so it's uh, certainly working, but more importantly, it's part of the mindset of this team. R.J. Nebhardt with his second bucket, and he's got five in the early going. Yep, you're watching one of the most improved players in the Big 12. He's a junior now, R.J., out of Keller, Texas, right in the mid-cities. And we were talking to him yesterday. He played against Cade Cunningham when Cade was a freshman at Arlington Bowie. Cade shot off to the right, but it's tracked down by Likely. Three minutes gone by, Boone with the miss, gets his own miss, puts it up and in. Two buckets for Keelan Boone, the 6'8 sophomore out of Tulsa. He gets his work done inside. His brother Caleb, although Caleb's improved his rebounding, he likes to spend a little more time on the perimeter. So right now it's R.J. Nemhart five and Keelan Boone five. 
with 16.40 to go in the first half. Good ball movement right there. You see R.J. Nemhart, not a great shooter, shooting about 30%, but his uh, his scoring numbers are up. You can see the improvement we talked about. And uh, just a great young man. We talked to him yesterday, and he talked about how much Desmond Bain helped him uh, as a younger player when R.J. came into the program. Desmond now, first-round pick, playing for the Memphis Grizzlies, left this program as the third all-time leading scorer in Horned Frog history. Yeah, they were roommates in RJ's freshman year and a lot rubbed off on Nemhart. There's an easy bucket close to the rim and it's a 7-5 Oklahoma State lead. Good strong drive that time by Likely, dropping it off to another impressive freshman, M.A. Moncrief out of Toronto. Well, that's sweet. I'm back in the dunk. How about a, How about a highlight in the first four minutes? Yep. This guy, you know, Rich, he's not scoring like he did a year ago when he needed to. He's much more of a facilitator because of the, uh, the, the you know, Kate Cunningham being in this program. But Ice Likely is a great teammate. Watch this pass right now. Good finish as well at the other end. So Keelan Boone off to a smoking hot start. And that's good enough for an SC Top 10 nomination. He has an early seven points. And a chance Listen, for eight. Yeah, when you like about the Boone twins, we'll see Caleb soon enough, is that they put on about 30 pounds each since they played in high school in Tulsa. I first met them, they were about 170 pounds each and 6'7. They're filling out nicely. Inside, and a foul is called. 15 51 to go. It's our first media timeout of this Big 12 opener for the Cowboys against the Frogs. Coming up, Richard Rich, the Dallas Metroplex not only has great high school basketball, it has great grassroots basketball. And these two guys literally go back that far. They're still very close friends, although uh, they're on nowhere in different uniforms tonight. But the basketball in this area, and of course, I've lived here now for almost two decades, is as good as any place in, in the country. When you think of some of the great players that have come out of this area, uh, it's remarkable, but the talent level continues to get better. Great coaches. Uh, it's, the, it's one of the few places in the country where you can actually, varsity coach can practice his team nine months out of the year. And these kids are really well schooled. And of course, Kate Cunningham is as fundamentally sound as you'll get. Cunningham missed that three. He has yet to get in the scoring column so far. It's been the Keelan Boone show. Eight points already of the ten Cowboys scoring. And Fran, since you know so much about this Dallas, Texas, and Metroplex area, I put it to you. Give me your all-time Metroplex team, and this is what you came up with. I did, man. Now, Mookie Blaylock fans are not going to be happy with me. C.J. Miles also had a long NBA career. There's been so many others. A.C. Law, of course. But this is my five. I'm going to war with this five. Marcus Smart's going to be my point guard. And, of course, Ricky Pierce, two-time NBA sixth man of the year. Sorry, Rick. Got to keep you in that role, coming off the bench, knocking down baskets. But, uh... Rich, you know, one of the other things I've told people for many years, you not only have great athletes in the city and in the Metroplex, and the coaching's gotten better, but like myself, a Northeast guy, so many people from Chicago, Dallas, excuse me, Chicago, Philadelphia, Detroit, New York, have migrated back to the Sun Belt, places like Houston and Dallas-Fort Worth, and they bring that love of basketball back with them, just like me. Jumper from the wing is good. Another three-pointer from TCU. That's Taryn Todd, the freshman out of Finley Prep by way of Ontario. Yep, same hometown as Andrew Wiggins. You know, Jamie Frank, going back to, sorry, going back to that conversation about the Dallas basketball players, you look no further than Mike Boynton, the head coach for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. He's a Brooklyn guy like yourself, and he said to us, I didn't think that there was any good basketball in the state of Texas until I got down here and started recruiting. And you could find tons of talent, and he certainly has. Yeah, and there's a great pass inside right there by Cunningham. And you know, Rich, I meant, I meant, uh, I meant, I was telling you earlier about uh, 
they have a thing called PE. Uh, it's the PE class where you can literally coach your varsity team for nine months during the PE class. And Mike Boynton was telling us yesterday that they, they the PE classes are different times of the day, 7.50 in the morning, 2.30 in the afternoon. And a good recruiter could get to four or five schools in a day and see four or five teams practice. Chuck O'Bannon with that three. So some of the reserves for Jamie Dixon chipping in early, friend. Chuck O'Bannon, I know he's not from Dallas. He's from <laughs> L.A. He's from, from Las Vegas, excuse me. Bishop Gorman High School. That's a familiar name to people out on the West Coast. TCU back in it, down just one, 13.53 to go. And it looks like in the early going, the Cowboys are intent on getting the ball close to the rim. Whereas Jamie Dixon's team is trying to fire away from outside the arc. Well, and they're pushing it too because their guard play has been it's much better this year And they're playing without Francisco Farabello a young man that uh, Has gotten off to a great start as a sophomore from Argentina Cunningham Open look on the outside from his fellow freshman Walker but Walker couldn't cash in it's out of bounds and it looks like it's going to stay Oklahoma State basketball. Well, Rondell Walker didn't cash in, but he made a great defensive play just being in the vicinity and forcing that turnover. And uh, Mike Boynton told us as a freshman, he was one of the top 60 players in the country last year, according to ESPN, but become a really good defensive stopper. You saw it right there. And an AAU teammate of Kate Cunningham and Mike Miles, Texas Titans. Nice pass, Cunningham to the other Boone, Caleb Boone in the scoring column now. Kate Cunningham, at times, Rich, is almost too unselfish. But what you love about his game is he gets everybody involved. He only took two shots in the second half against Wichita State. Of course, he made the big one with nine seconds to go. But I want to see him more aggressive offensively. Let's take a look now. Watch Kate Cunningham right now. Now, a little pick and roll, slip to the rim, two on one. But at, see, at six foot eight, he's got the ability to see over the trap. And there's a great diamond side, no help from the weak side. But uh, if there's one thing I would criticize him about, which is phenomenal, it's there's times where he's almost too unselfish. He's the best player on the floor virtually every night this season. Todd, a deep three off the mark. Mike Boynton telling us in that Wichita State game where he hit the game winning three in that previous timeout, he said, Kate, you have to go out there and be the best guy on the floor. And he did, of course. Yeah. Well, the teams have game plan to keep him out of the lane. And how about RJ Nemhart, man? Just love watching this kid's improvement. Third bucket of the night for RJ Nemhart. He has eight. And now it's a one point game again. Oklahoma State. 14 TCU 13 and there's a steal by the frogs defense Tried to back cut good good alertness right there Transition three off the mark And we have a foul on the floor after the rebound by M.A. Moncrief You know rich, uh, I, was, I was checking before the game I mentioned that these are two of the youngest teams in college basketball probably of the, the power conferences they're in that mix of about 10 or 12 teams that are really, really young. Now, we know the Dukes and the Kentuckys get the one-and-done guys. But in this case, it's really hard to play so many young players and have the success both teams have had so far. But, uh, of course, Jamie Dixon's been around the block, 15 postseasons in 17 years, and really like the, like the style of Mike Boyd and the way he has gradually grown into this role as the head coach of the Cowboys. We saw Cunningham go to the bench for a quick rest, and I stress quick. He averages about 33 minutes a game so far. And you got a TV timeout coming, so that's a good piece of coaching right there by Mike Boyden because he can get extra rest. Well, we got a one-point game in the Big 12 debut of Kate Cunningham. And it's the Boone brothers, Caleb, and that total of seven points. What do you expect from this one tomorrow night? KU's got an experienced team. They're going to have fans in Lubbock, so it's going to be interesting. I talked to Chris Beard today, and he said, hey, the thing that worries me most is that Bill Self's had a week off, so you're liable to see anything from them. I, I, very rarely does a coach morph the way Bill Self has. When I first got to know him, it was three out, two in, power basketball. Then recently, four out, one in. Now they're playing five out. And... Uh, 
Chris Beard said, we're not sure what to expect. I do know this, Rich, in this conference right now, we're watching two of those teams tonight, you will see a lot of four-guard and five-out basketball from Baylor, from T Texas Tech, from Kansas, these two teams as well. Iowa State's playing four guards. It's the way it's it's really the trend now in all of basketball. In the NBA, they call it positionless basketball. When I was coaching at the mid-major level, we called it the necessity is the mother of invention because you have to play your best players. And uh, you're seeing a lot of four guard offense in the Big 12 this year. Well, that's music to Mike Boynton's ears, especially because he has a kid like Ice Likely on his team who Mike calls clearly the leader for this Cowboys team, despite the fact that they have a superstar on their team in Kate Cunningham. You know, when I was at practice in October, Kate was kind of just doing his thing and wasn't getting too excited. And I said to Mike, what's up with Kate? He said, coach, he's a freshman. He goes, our leader is Ice Likely. And, but now in big spots, as we saw against Wichita State, Kate Cunningham is not afraid of the moment and never has been. We've got ourselves a tie ball game. It's raining threes for the TCU Horned Frogs. Already their fifth triple. This is exactly the problem Mike Boynton told us to expect from TCU. They push it in transition. They play spread basketball and they will shoot the three on a whim. Oklahoma State tries to answer, no go. Here comes O'Bannon. Gives it up to Miles. Out of bounds with 10.33 to go. Take a look right here. This time, P.J. Fuller knocking it down from deep. Young man who grew up in the Seattle area where there's great basketball. He's actually on state championship teams at two different high schools playing for a guy named Brandon Roy who was a very good NBA player, of course. His career was shortened, but uh, there you see P.J. Fuller, another guy that's improved in his sophomore season. I love these guards. I know TCU is picked in the bottom half of the Big 12, but they have a really nice collection of young perimeter players. Looking to avoid going 0-2 in Big 12 play. They open their Big 12 sleep with a loss at home to Oklahoma. There's the first bucket of the game for the big man, 21 in purple. That's Kevin Samuel. And that's not an accident. When you start raining down threes, it opens up the floor and spreads you out. It's cutting him back on the floor. Oklahoma State it's trying to regain the lead now, trailing by two. Rich, no matter who you talk to, any of Cade Cunningham's former teammates or coaches, you ask Don Showalter, the, the coach of the United States Junior National Team, Bruce Weber, who coached uh, Cade in the Under-19 World Championships a couple years ago. They absolutely love this young man's maturity, not just the ability, but the, uh, the emotional intelligence to make his teammates better. Here he is with the ball, number two in orange. Cade See the crowd around him. A lot of purple when he drives. Five on the shot clock. Likely try to force it inside. And TCU comes away with it. Here's Nebhard. Nice. Gets it up for the dunk from Miles. How about that? Little Mike Miles has been quiet tonight, but a great hookup right there from Ruben, from RJ Nebhard. Almost called him Ruben, his dad play in the NBA, but RJ and Miles have hooked up nicely all season long. How about that? That's a linebacker right there, Rich. 6'2 power forward at times, although he's a terrific point guard. Averaging about 11 points a game and 8 rebounds, to your point, <laughs> friend. Yeah. And he was so good early last year before he was sick. Samuel stumbled, didn't get called for the travel, puts it in with the left hand. He's a very underrated big man around the country. Averaging over 10 rebounds a game. He's got good mobility. Accurate inside. Here's Ron Flavors off the window too strong. And Nemhart bringing it down again. Four-point lead. Looking to add to it, and he does. That jumper looks sweet tonight, Fran. And it, yes, it, it is. And I'll tell you, they're playing with uh, they're playing with reckless abandon. They're pushing it. They're shooting good rhythm threes in transition. And this is the problem my point told us yesterday during our Zoom call is we got to keep them from shooting threes. Cunningham 
No. And the rebound to Easley. Listen, they're Hardest challenging the game him. for TCA. Yeah. Off the window and the follow by Samuel. Mike Boyd needs a timeout right here. This is all because of the drive by Mike Miles. That opens up the lane for the big power and fell to finish. Guys, thank you very much. We talk about a 6'9 guy bringing the ball up. How about 6'8 Kate Cunningham running the show for the Oklahoma State Cowboys? But, Fran, in the early going, it's R.J. Nembhardt stealing the spotlight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know these TCU guys, especially the Dallas guys, are locked in on uh, Kate Cunningham. They've done a good job so far. Kate hadn't finished at the rim until right there. How about that? Coming out of a timeout. Yeah. Get to the basket. And... Yeah, you know, Rich, I've said it before, I'll say it again. There's going to be times this year where a tough shot by Kate Cunningham is going to be better than a great shot by some of his teammates. And that's where I think he's got to have, and he does have the killer instinct, but i got to see him take more than 13 shots a game. Playing some great defense on this possession for the Pokes, but it's Kevin Samuel getting the ball down low. Has a great job of using the rim on the shot block right there. See that? Once he gets to the other side of the rim, Kevin Samuel cannot go through that rim without goaltending. So that's a great job right there of not only using his frame, but also that rim to put the, the big fella from Barbuda in jail. Well, that big fella knocks down his first free throw of the night. He has seven. But Cunningham, although just two points, he affects the game in so many different ways. Already has four rebounds and two assists. Samuel one for two. So it's an eight-point TCU lead their largest of the game. See, watch the, watch the floor shrink when Cunningham's got the ball, and they'll also back off these drivers because the big fella can throw it back at you. Averaging almost two and a half blocks a game. Got one there. Here's Nebhard going strong to the hole, coming up empty. Cunningham up the left side. Look at all those purple shoe jerseys. Called his own number and came up a little off the mark on that three ball. I don't mind that, Rich. I want to see him be aggressive and get his own offense going. Big fella. Samuel misses two at close range and Boone with the rebound. Good push. Nice pass Cunningham to Moncrief. Freshman to freshman, friend. You talk about Kate Cunningham, it's a young Oklahoma State team, and I love M.A. Moncrief, a young man from Toronto. This year, number two on the ESPN rankings, and uh, he has done exactly what people expected him to do so far in the early going of his career. A little slow start tonight, but that's been true of uh, the Cowboys in general, Rich. I've been impressed with TCU and the aggressiveness on the offensive end. Yeah, and doing it on defense as well, holding Oklahoma State to just one three-point field goal. That's not the strength of their team. They're ninth in the conference in three-point percentage, but right now TCU is clicking on all cylinders. Shot clock winding down, man. and they another triple. Mike Miles, you're going to love this young man. TCU, Horn Frog fans already do. As good as Cade Cunningham has been for TCU, Mike Miles will be one of the best freshmen in this league. Three straight games, 15 or more points. He's got five tonight. Speaking of five, there's number five, Rondell Walker, but he's off the mark. Look at this pace. They Rocks. love pushing it. Yep. Deep three. Miles, not this time. And a foul in the paint. Let's take a look at Mike Miles in action. A young man from Lancaster High School in the southeast side of Dallas. Strong, can shoot it from deep, takes it to the basket. Kind of reminds me of Ezekiel Elliott a little bit with that haircut. But, uh, <laughs> and, and he lost 15 pounds over the summer. He came in with the uh, pandemic 15 until he got to campus. And uh, one of the reasons he stayed home is because he's close to his family and you know mom's home cooking had something to do with that 15, but the, he lost a freshman 15, Rich, pretty quickly, and uh, the numbers speak for themselves. 
Yeah, interesting when Jamie Dixon was talking to us about him. He said he told him point blank. He said if you want to be an elite point guard, you've got to lose some body fat. Elite point guards are usually at around 5% body fat. <laughs> he was more around 10 to 15%. Oh, and yeah. He took it to heart and took it upon himself to lose that weight. He had the cracker barrel 15% is what he had, <laughs> just like I do. Yeah. Speaking from experience, life on the road oh, yeah. in the Big 12. Well, life in the Dallas Metroplex. <laughs> you can always find a good cracker barrel out there. A the trap. Oh. Here's Ladee. Comes up short. Well, we talked already about the Metroplex connections in this game, Fran. And two best friends greeting each other a little coolly, would you say? Kate <laughs> Mike Miles. Hey, welcome to the Big 12, because that's how it is. You know what? We can be we can be boys in the summertime, but not tonight. TCU already 0-1, and, and, of course, Oklahoma State trying to get their first Big 12 win. These teams were picked 7th and 9th in the league. Oklahoma State 7th, TCU 9th, so a lot at stake. And so far with the eye test, friend, I would say both of these teams look better than those preseason prognostications. Very possibly this league's loaded, we know, from start from top to bottom. Right now, Joe Lenardi has seven teams projected to make the NCAA tournament. There's an easy two for Nembhard. Kevin Samuel, man. 12 for RJ. Yeah. There's likely misses. And a chance to extend pushing. the lead for the Frogs. And a traveling violation called on Kevin Easley. Rich, I'll tell you this, one of the things, you know, now you're going to crown the lane. Watch the, watch the drop off right here. Kevin Samuel inside, the big fella, big loopy. Look, look how he draws help. You ne Boone, you never help up off the baseline, okay? You stay back, you never leave the baseline when you have a big guy in the dunker spot. They'll get that corrected at uh, in the video tomorrow. But Rich, what I like myself. with yeah, what I, what I like what TCU is doing is they're they're taking away the three ball from Kate Cunningham. They're giving him the mid range, and they got the big fella in the lane challenging the the drives. So we talked about how impressive Kate Cunningham is with that big body, but Kevin Samuel with no foul trouble is a presence in there defensively. Yes, he is a legit big body. And I gave R.J. Nemhart credit on the dunk the last time down the floor. It was actually Kevin Samuel. So Nemhart has 10, Samuel has 9, and it's an 11-point lead for the Horn Frogs. Looking to snap an Oklahoma State 10-game win streak. I'm leading shot blocker. Take a look. Kevin Samuel, no fouls tonight, so he can be aggressive. And watch him back up, give ground, hands to the ceiling, stay vertical, and make Cade Cunningham, even with that 7-2 wingspan, score over the big fella. Hadn't able to do it so far. Cade went in amongst the trees, passed it up. And Boone missed the jumper. Kevin Samuel just, lead of the game for TCU. Yeah, Kevin just got his fifth rebound, Rich. First time we're seeing number two in purple. That's Mickey Pearson on the floor for Jamie Dixon. RJ Nemhart having a great first half. Ten points so far. Tough pass right there. TCU going four out, one in. They run a motion offense. They anchor the big fella inside. Eight on the shot clock, Rich. Let's see where they go to create some offense. I'd like to see Mike Miles or R.J. Nemart with the ball right now. Now Mike Boynton going particularly small. Avery Anderson on the floor, as is Rondell Walker, the defensive stopper on this Cowboys team. High pick and roll for R.J. Five to shoot. Nemhart has the ball. Gives it up. Here's Samuel. Left-handed hook. In and out. Fight for the loose ball. And Pearson comes away with it. How about that? Mickey Pearson right in the ball game and right on cue. And the takeaway from TCU once again. Hey. Oh, Strong. Like said he's got to try and stop that transition game to come up empty there. Cowboys shooting 31% tonight. And finally, it's been six and a half minutes, but Oklahoma State gets back in the scoring column, Avery Anderson. That was just a breakdown. TCU a little confused. Oh, 
See how they go four out, one in. Random movement. No play through Samuel until he comes to the high post. Miles off to Pearson. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Nembhard. Calls his own number and badly misses that time. Here's Walker. Slashes to the hoop and gets the bucket. Strong to move by buckets for Rondell Walker. Yeah, loved it. Loved it. Loved the slashing ability from the wing. From the freshman from Oklahoma City. What a momentum, Rich, and that's what you need. TCU has controlled this first half, but Cowboys would love another basket or two. Only 3,500 allowed inside Gallagher Iba, but they're having their voices heard right now. Trying to spur on the pokes. Here comes Likely leading the break. And he gets it to go. Ice Likely showing what he does best. You are not stopping this guy in transition. You talk about a head of steam right now. First of all, it was a quick shot, which led to a long rebound and an open court. Take a look. Here's the open court, and here he comes into your living room. 6'3", I don't know, 220 maybe? I know Mike Gundy would love to have him on the football field. Young man from <laughs> Arlington. Played his high school basketball at Timberview High School in Mansfield. Misses the chance for the three-point play, but still a seven-point TCU lead. The only way you beat six-month-age cheddar toasted on the shell of a chalupa is to put it in this box. The $5 toasted cheddar chalupa box is back for a limited time, only at Taco Bell. Alongside Fran Schiller, Rich Hollenberg, Gallagher Iba Arena, Eddie Sutton Court for the home opener in Big 12 play for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. They're 6 and 0, riding a 10 game win streak dating back to last year, but the TCU Horn Frogs don't want to hear any of that noise. They're up 35-28 with a minute to go in the first half. Left hand the follow is good by Moncrief. I'll tell you, I love this young man's energy, Rich. Two-time Canadian High School Player of the Year. Got a chance to see him at the Nike Hoop Summit a couple years ago. Eddie Sutton would have loved this kid. He is tough and gritty. An eight-zip run by the Pokes. Have them right back in this. And no Kate Cunningham on this run. Good for the Cowboys' confidence. Feed inside. Samuel rattles it home. And Kevin Samuel's in double digits with 11. Yeah, big basket. That stemmed the tide a little bit, but Cowboys have a chance to really creep back into this game. Shot clock is off. 15 seconds to go. What do you think the call is here, friend? Ice likely. High pick and roll. Get downhill. Get to the rim. Looks like Rondell Walker instead. And not a smart foul. That's going to be on R.J. Nembhardt with 5.8 to go in the first half. Down a guy that's made 80% of his free throws this year, his freshman year, Rondell Walker at a Putnam City West in Oklahoma City. He gets the first. Walker has seven and a chance to make it eight. Mike Boynton State told us trailed yesterday. by as many as 13 earlier in this game, and this run has come largely without Kate Cunningham. Yeah, and that's a confidence builder. Mike Boynton told us yesterday he recruited this young man as, as long as long and hard as he did Kate Cunningham, both as freshmen. Walker on the season now 14 for 17 from the free throw line. You love that out of a freshman. And it's last shot time for the Frogs. A little pressure right here. Slow the game down. Nemhart slips and time runs out. But TCU, a sharp first half, 37-32, and a struggling first half for the superstar, Kate Cunningham. Just two points on one for nine from the field. We're going to send things to the studio for the G part of that lead at the end of the first half. What, the, what is the momentum going to be like for both teams in the first three minutes of the second half? Well, a look at our first half stats brought to you by Ally. And you see the key stats. Kevin Samuel came to play 11 points 
leading the TCU Horned Frogs. And right off the bat, Oklahoma State gets back in the scoring column. He created a little switch right there. And he was able to take advantage, Cunningham was, in the lane on the post up. Miles gives it up. That's P.J. Fuller, the sophomore. Here's Nemhart at close range. R.J. Nemhart with a dozen. Nifty, really nifty. R.J. was going to go up on the right side of the basket. He felt the defensive presence. He snuck behind the basket. Good finish. Another switch opportunity. They're going, they're going at Cade early now. Cunningham with the Another. left hand had it blocked. Here's Light. challenge. Yep. Now a three ball off the mark, and Oklahoma State has really struggled from three-point range. They're now one for eight in that category. Rich, they're going to struggle all season. They really will. They are not a good shooting team. Outside, nine on the shot clock, and they miss again. If you're Jamie Dixon, you just seal off the lane, bring that ball to the big fella, and challenge those three-point shots. And Empire misses. Here come the pokes. Cunningham, number two in orange with the ball. Likely improved the shooting stroke, not on that one, though. That was a great example of Kevin Samuel. He met Cade Cunningham at the basket. Cade thought better of shooting it, passed it out to Likely, and it, with all... Listen, we love Ice Likely, but the one thing you're going to do if you're an opponent is give him that three ball. Absolutely critical first three minutes for both teams, Rich. I was I was a fanatic when I coached about getting my team ready to start the second half with energy and emotion. It's so easy to come out of the locker room up five like TCU was and not realize realizing how hard it was to get that lead in the first 20 minutes. So you got to come out with energy. And I would have to imagine during these COVID times, Fran, having only 3,500 in the crowd instead of 13,000 in the crowd at Gallagher Ivor Arena has to have some kind of an impact on Oklahoma State. Uh, yeah, I tell you what, it, it impacts it impacts every team in college basketball this year. You have to create your own energy. I don't care if there's nobody in the arena, 3,500 vaccine, no vaccine. You have to bring your own energy every night, home and away. Samuel goes one for two. He matches Nemhart for game high honors with 12 apiece. There's number 12, Moncrief, for the Cowboys had it partially blocked. Yeah, but another challenge by Kevin Samuel is now holding his nose a little bit. Two minutes Look gone by. Six Look at the point purple. lead and a turnover for the Frogs. I'll tell you, we came in talking about this Oklahoma State defense. I've been impressed with TCU's D. Well, that last possession, there were three purple jerseys around Cade Cunningham. Ten on the shot clock for the Frogs. Can't guard Inside, him. Samuel. Got it. Can't, can't guard him. Good deep position by the big fella. And, Rich, I brought it up earlier. He's got no fouls, which has always been his, uh, you know, kryptonite. Another three off the mark. Is Oklahoma State settling, friend? Yes, they are. And that guy can shoot it. That's the one guy that can really knock down shots is Ferran Flavors, the transfer from Cal Baptist. Shot it at a 43% clip last year. That was good for 16th in the nation at Cal Baptist. He's got his first points of the night. It's still a five-point game. That's what the spread was at halftime. Cowboys are trapping all those high pick and rolls. Not a good pass. I'd go back to my four out motion if I were Jamie Dixon. That was very effective. Another three ball attempt and the second time it goes down in a row. That's the exact reason this young man transferred to Oklahoma State. Rich, he doesn't do a lot of things at a high level, power conference level, but the one thing he does is he shoots the ball from deep. Mr. Ice Cream, 31 flavors. It's got to be the best name number combination in college basketball. Good back cut. And a big dunk that goes off the back of the rim. 
Good challenge by Cunningham. Using those extra large mitts of his. Here's another turnover. O'Bannon at the other end. Charles O'Bannon Jr. taking advantage of the loose ball and finishing at the other end. And Fran, we're not yet five minutes into the second half, but it seems like every time Oklahoma State looks like they're gaining momentum, TCU has an answer. Well, there's an energy level that we've seen with both teams coming out the second half, and that's a good sign. There's a strong take to the hole, and Oklahoma State is starting to get things clicking on offense. That's that Moncrief, Moncrief. For another two. Yeah, he took it right at the shot blocker. Sometimes with a shot blocker, fading away, not the answer, go right through his chest. Here's another turnover. Could be an easy two at this end. And a dunk from Kay Cunningham. We have ourselves a tie ball game. This is what we talked about, Rich. You have to start the second half with high energy. Oklahoma State's last lead came at the 11-23 point of the first half. It was 16-13, and now we have a stoppage of play with 14-47 to go, and the Cowboys threatening to regain that lead. 220. He's thought of by our mock draft guys as the number one pick. I think it's early, Rich. I've talked to a lot of NBA teams. I love this kid. There's so much to love about him, but you know, you got to put these boards together. I remember just a couple years ago, everybody had R.J. Barrett as the number one pick in the draft. That lasted about five minutes when Duke went on that trip to Toronto. That was pretty evident that Zion Williamson was a special talent. But I love this kid. He's going to be a high pick. He's going to be an even better NBA player because he's going to play in space without five purple jerseys in the lane. He's going to play with great players around him. He is a great facilitator. He's a great teammate. But a uh, little too early right now to just say who is the number one pick. Jalen Green, Eric Mobley from USC, the big fellow, reminds me of Chris Bosh. But certainly Kate Cunningham is going to be an outstanding NBA player. Chris Bosh, you had to go back to the Metroplex references, didn't you, Fred? Absolutely. Look at that move. Here's Cade with a nice move, and he gets mugged in the paint. Cade Cunningham will go to the line for the first time. That's good coaching. This is the third time tonight that Mike Boynton has come out of a timeout and created an ISO situation for Cade Cunningham. And PJ Fuller may be six foot four, but that's a hard matchup for him to handle. Good coaching coming out of a timeout. What do you, what's your ATO strategy? And uh, Mike Boynton's ATO strategy after timeout strategy is let's create something for our best player to get him going a little bit. Well, I know it's not sexy to talk about free throws, Fran, but that's another plus in the column for Kate Cunningham. 86% coming in. And of course, I mentioned that and he goes one for two from the free throw line. Don't Here's let this guy open. In well, and out. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Wichita State held Cunningham to 10 points over the weekend, and they did a great job of keeping him off the foul line. He did not shoot a free throw. The TCU offense has gone silent. Here's Likely, and he gets fouled hard, goes into the stanchion, and he's helped up by Mike Miles, his fellow Metroplex play. This Cunningham connection with Likely didn't start at Oklahoma State. They were teammates on the uh, 2019 under 19 FIBA World Championship team representing the United States of America. That's right. They went out to Greece, head coached yep. by Bruce Weber, won a gold medal. We've got a top 15 Big 12 matchup for you tomorrow. That's number five, Kansas in Lubbock, taking on number 14, Texas Tech. That's going to be right here on ESPN and the ESPN app. We've talked a lot about Kate Cunningham tonight, Fran. Maybe one of the unsung stars of the early part of this season has been Jalen Wilson for Kansas. To give it to Dip. Very, very nice, Rich. Another Metroplex guy from Denton Guyer, <laughs> right up uh, about 30 minutes south, uh, north of downtown. And you'll see some Dallas kids tomorrow night. Not only Jalen Wilson, the outstanding redshirt freshman for the... Jayhawks, but how about Marcus Garrett? How about uh, Michael Peavy? How about Kyler Edwards for Texas Tech? Well, this Big 12 conference is full of those great players from uh, Dallas Fort Worth. Last time I checked, there were about 130 high schools from the west side of Fort Worth to the east side of Dallas. 
Here's Cunningham right into the teeth of the defense and gets another foul. And wouldn't you know it, you talked about Kyler Edwards. Kyler Edwards and Kate Cunningham were high school teammates in Cade's freshman year at Bowie High School in Arlington. Yep. And that's how Mike Boynton first saw Kate Cunningham. He went to recruit Kyler Edwards and saw this young kid as a freshman kind of deferring to some of the stars on the team and said, there's something about this kid that I like. And he's known him ever since. You know, he, uh, he offered him a scholarship that day without telling his head coach, Brad Underwood. And he was an assistant coach at Oklahoma State at the time, and he told Coach Underwood, he goes, hope you're okay with this, but I just offered a freshman a scholarship. And, uh, <laughs> of course, it's a big reason why on June 5th, when Oklahoma State went on NCAA probation, which they're appealing right now, and the original ruling is that they're going to be out of the NCAA tournament this year, it took Kate Cunningham about two weeks, but he said, you know what? I want to go to Oklahoma State because I want to be with Coach Boynton, who recruited me from the very beginning. Also want to be with my brother Cannon, who's a member of the coaching staff. Metroplex mania continues. That was a sweet Mike Miles layup for the Horn Frogs. Boy, Mike Miles is going to be a tremendous Big 12 player. Here's Taron Todd with a tough two. His first two of the second half. We have a tie well, ball. Sure. Yeah, these guards are really good for TCU. Back and forth easy. we go. Moncrief in double digits with 10. Moncrief reminds me of one of those guys. I told you, Ivan, Ivan McFarland, the Graham twins. Coach Sutton, the late Coach Sutton. Congratulations, Coach, for getting in the Hall of Fame. He would have loved M.A. Moncrief. Here's Ladee with a hand in his face, and Jadon Lajon gets his first two. A Houston kid. A amongst all these Dallas kids, we got a Houston kid. <laughs> Young man who it transferred like he from needs a, He needs a passport. Yeah. <laughs> Transfer from Ohio State, started his career playing for Chris Holden. Tied at 50 apiece. Big 12 See, opener they, for Cowboys. They don't double. Here's Flavors for three in and out. Great pass by Kate Cunningham. That's one of those plays where I think he's got to force that one to the rim. I really do. He, he really didn't command a double team on that last play. And I think Kate Cunningham at times has got to take over the game offensively. Rich, in the win over Wichita State, where they had a sizable lead and, and squandered it, he only took two shots in the second half. Here's Likely. Moncrief takes it strong, gets it to go, but an offensive foul is called. That's where you got to just pull up and come to a jump stop, and R.J. Nemhart gets his body in the way, takes the charge. Deviation with Reese Davis and the Cyclone fans. Yeah, Reese was taking an exception to the Cyclones being uh, number six, and now the Cyclones can end all that speculation with a second win. Oh, can you imagine beating Oklahoma, Lincoln Riley's team, twice in one season? That's a tall order, but uh, Matt Campbell's done an amazing job in Ames. He really has. Look at Isaiah or Isaac likely taking it to the hole, almost a chance at a three-point play, and that is defense turning into offense. He gets the pick, and then he almost takes it to the house. I was in Brooklyn last November, Rich, when these guys blew out Syracuse and Ole Miss, and Isaac likely had 26 and eight assists against Syracuse. This team was ranked in 7-0, and and then he contracted uh, Mono. And he's really never the same. We, we did a lot of games, Rich. I don't really think he was ever the same until the final three weeks of February. Right. And certainly, since he's been back, there's the numbers tonight. He's a stat sheet stuffer because of that unusual size and strength for a point guard. And he's rich. He's really deferred this year on the ball to Cade Cunningham. And they have, they have a great relationship. Free throws, a little bit of a fly in the ointment tonight for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Yeah, I'd like to see TCU go back to a little more spread out, four out motion, and move this defense a little bit more. The pick and rolls have not been as effective. Just easy, nice pass. gives it up to the big guy. Samuel just kind of tossed it up on the rim. Yeah, he, he needs to go strong with that. Three on two for the Cowboys ends up in a foul called on Mike Miles. Take 
If you look right here, here's the drive and a nice little dump off. And no, you got to go strong with that big fella. You can't baby that ball up there when you're 6'11, 260. So now Bryce Williams, known more for his defense than his offense, is at the line, averaging 6.8 a game. But he is a lockdown defender. His 10 steals coming into this game led the Cowboys. You know, he's a guy that I think you're going to see more of during the year. He's a transfer from Ole Miss and a junior college All-American the year before that. And uh, he's always been known, Rich, as a really good outside shooter. So when you combine the defensive energy, they may need to get his shooting on the floor at some point. And I think they will. Cowboys now 10 for 16 as a team from the free throw line. Just watch the offense in the half court and see if you can see a little bit more movement. They got a lot of movement. Look at this. Now, Avery Anderson with the theft. Likely at the other end. Well, you're not stopping that guy. Very, very sloppy last few possessions for TCU. Cowboys oh, back yeah. on top. And a timeout called by Jamie Dixon. Oh, check that. The ball goes out of bounds. Let me tell you something. Avery Anderson, we haven't mentioned him. He's from up north of Fort Worth up there in Justin, up by Texas Motor Speedway. He's hassling Mike Miles right now. There's that double team. They're trapping pick and rolls, and that's really slowed TCU down. Here's Terrence Todd. He He's had himself a great second half. My goodness. Seven points in the second half for Terrence Todd. Puts TCU up by two. Good cut. And Good cut. one opportunity. And that's Rondell Walker going to the line. I'll tell you what I loved about that. Ice Likely became a post player right there. He used that dribble to back in. Watch him back into the lane. And he waits for the cutter. And a good job by Rondell Walker recognizing that he had that little, what we call the middle paint area to do his dirty work. Good find by Ice Likely. This kind of reminded me. Being. Go ahead. Yeah, it reminded me of Villanova the way they post their guards. I think you can do that with both Likely and Cunningham even more. A Walker, a freshman, Moncrief, a freshman, of course, Kate Cunningham. This could be Oklahoma State's best recruiting class ever, and that's saying something for a very tradition-rich program. Well, they're tightening up the defense now. Great help that time on the lob inside. Now P.J. Fuller back in the game with three fouls. Mike Boynton has really addressed the defensive end of things with these young Cowboys. And there you see the help right there from the weak side. Excellent. That ball stays in the air a long time when you throw that lob pass from the top of the key. That's what we call a helium pass, Rich. <laughs> Not good. Like, like a balloon. Anderson and the foul is called and if that's on fuller, that's going to be his fourth well, That might put the, the Cowboys in the bonus doesn't it? Indeed it does in a tie ball game with 902 to go Free throws could tell the tale in this one You know friend we talk about Oklahoma State's defense when you go all the way back I'm not talking all the way back to Eddie Sutton even before that when Henry Iba was the head coach and Eddie Sutton was an assistant they coveted defense, and now Mike Boynton has said, we are reintroducing that to this program. Mr. Iba invented defense. There's very right. few people in the sport of basketball that can say things like that. And there you see the jerseys, very common during the Sutton era, as you mentioned. But uh, in this part of the country, Rich, and I think of this part of the country, I'm talking about old Big 8 basketball, Southwest Conference, Mr. Iba had literally the most influence of any basketball coach ever I mean it's, it's really going on 75 years now Mr. Iva influenced so many great coaches Bob Knight Don Haskins Eddie Sutton the list is endless the follow by Caleb Boone Oklahoma State on top and Oklahoma State has 767 wins yeah the, the defense has been ratcheted up 
I think part of it is because of the lack of movement by TCU. You just can't turn it over this much. Wow! And Bryce Williams with the flush and the flex after that. It's a four-point Oklahoma State lead with 8-11 to go. And we have a timeout. Have it. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. And you never know when Fran Fraschilla will show up on a Big 12 now telecast. I love it. If I get a chance to do a Kansas or a West Virginia game, I'm in. <laughs> Absolutely. We had some fun last Virginia. year. On Friday, they're taking on Iowa State as an early start to the Big 12 slate. How do you feel about that, Frank? Hey, we have basketball, Rich. I'm so excited that we have basketball. We're going to keep these young people safe. We're in a once-a-century pandemic. Hopefully, it's coming to a close soon. But uh, I just love seeing these kids compete on the court. Tough take. The follow, no good. And it's brought in again by Boone. Caleb Boone has six points, and now the lead is six for Oklahoma State. Largest He's of the a... game for the Pokes. Yeah, and it's really been their defense. TCU was in such a great rhythm offensively, Rich. We were talking about how well they shot the ball in the first half, and they only got one three-point attempt in the second half. Terrence Todd. Maybe a little freshman mistake goes out of bounds. Jamie Dixon, much to his consternation. Yeah, he thought that ball was knocked out by Oklahoma State, but uh, the official had a really good view of that. We'll take the timeout on the floor. 7.06 to go. Six-point lead for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Officials called this a turnover by TCU, but yeah. it looks like Bryce Williams touched the ball. Absolutely. Now, we had to watch this like 10 times during the break, and it does look like uh, Jamie Dixon had a great point right there. And uh, the officials, it's the only occupation where you have to start out perfect and improve from there. <laughs> and and they, they missed their share, but not, not many. Yeah, hey, Rich, you know what I did one summer in the Big 12? Take a look right here. Now, this looks like... See, this looks like it hits P.J. Fuller from that angle. But the first angle we showed you was clear that he didn't touch it. I spent one summer, not a summer, but a weekend at Big 12 officiating camp. I actually officiated AAU games ever since that time. And I'm a former coach, right? Ever since that time, I have learned how hard this job is. And I'll tell you the other thing is the rules are so hard to learn. Uh, I, uh, it's something that's why I have a little bit more, I don't know, uh, concern, I guess, or uh, empathy for officiating because it's a hard job. Coaching's hard, playing's hard, officiating's hard. So I have one Broadcasting's question. easy. How, how yeah. many tees did you give out when you were officiating? <laughs> no, I didn't. But I'll tell you, in uh, nine years as a head coach, I got five tees in nine seasons. That's a pretty good uh, percentage. So as high energy as I was on the sideline, and I did bark at officials, I kind of kept kept it at a, I took it to the edge, if you know what I mean. Didn't go over the line, but the thing about it is, uh, it's a hard job, man. They get 95% of them right. Good for them. We got guys shooting 55% from the foul line tonight. Yeah. We don't criticize them. Rondell Walker misses the front end of a one and one. By the way, a veteran officiating crew tonight, Gary Maxwell, Kelly Self, Rick Crawford. Hey, Gary Maxwell took a shot the other night. He was bleeding, stitches. He was down for 10 minutes. He got up, finished the game, I, I believe, but he took some shot. Hazard. Pay. Cade Cunningham back on the floor. He's been relatively quiet, although 8.7 rebounds, three assists is a good game for most for Kate Cunningham coming in averaging 18 and a half nearly six rebounds and four assists a game it's a little bit of a head scratcher for him he knocks down that free throw gives it Rich, nine. What, yeah what's happening to Kate and he'll find this out in the big 12 is people will game plan for him they're going to crowd the lane with bodies they're gonna force him to kick it out to teammates who are not as talented as he is they're going to they're going to contest every shot they're going to double him in the post 
and he'll find out different ways to get his game going but this is not like high school and this is another gear being that it's big 12 play that's right you might think those and challenges would come against the Baylors and the Texas Techs and the West Virginia's all really ferocious defenses maybe not TCU but TCU has played well defensively tonight well they have and, and listen this is a different level it's counterintuitive to say this but the NBA game will actually be easier for him because the spacing is different. You don't you have the NBA three-second rule. You have shooters on the wings. You have a higher level of player. So it, it's kind of crazy to say this, but there's nights he's gonna have like this where it's gonna be hard to get into the lane. Where in the NBA it's not gonna be as difficult. You know who he reminds me of, and he's not as athletic. He has some Grand Hill in his game. He's got that size. Now he's not the athlete Grand Hill was. But in terms of being a great all-around prospect at six foot eight, passing, scoring, shooting, defending, rebounding, you know, that, that's one of the guys he reminds me of. Of course, it's sacrilegious to say he'd be as good, but uh, there's no doubt he's going to be a very good pro. Here he is with the ball, gives it up. Pass. That's a dunk in the NBA. And he follows with the bucket. You see again, you know, a great pass. I got Isaac Lively not finishing in the NBA. You're throwing at the Andre Drummond and he's dunking on somebody's head. This is what love that to is good. RJ Nemhard has 14, just the second bucket of the second half. TCU settled down the last couple minutes, Rich. Stands to reason that we're talking about Kate Cunningham struggling. He has 11 points and eight rebounds. So ends up with a trip with a double double tonight. Yeah, he'll have a couple triple doubles this season. Here's Cunningham again. That time he's met by Samuel. Samuel's done a good job all night. Look at this run out. Tarrant Todd lost the handle, caught it too deep under the basket. Another turnover for TCU. That has really bothered them in the second half. They got 19 turnovers, Rich, but you see the challenge at the rim. Sloppy pass, and yet they're still in this game. Yeah. Jamie Dixon's team came in with only 13 turnovers and average, but in his last two games, 18 turnovers against Providence, 19 against Texas A&M. They have another 19 tonight. You saw the differential in points off turnovers, 23-6, I think. Here's Cunningham, showing the patience, just probing in the lane. We'll see. That's what I like there. Yeah, when you when you attack a shot blocker, you got to go through his chest. You got to put your body on his. He's not. Kevin Samuel is not as mobile as Cade coming Cunningham as watch. This is what Cade does well. He takes his body to the defender, and he's got to do this more right there. See, that doesn't even look like a foul when we run it back. But the fact that there was contact is what he has to continue to do. He's got to draw fouls because he shoots it well from the line and he's got the body to be able to do that. That's just the second foul whistled on the big man, 21 in purple. Kevin Samuel has had himself a good game tonight. Cunningham goes two for two, so now he's up to 13 points and it's a five point Oklahoma State lead, four and a half to go. Nebhart calls tough his own player. number and cashes in. Like that, RJ's got 16 tonight and that was no offense by TCU, just a good individual play. Cunningham is feeling it now. Well, I like the way he's mixing it up now. That time, instead of taking it at Samuel, he just settled for the foul line jump shot. There's that trapping that's really bothered TCU tonight in pick and roll. And with French, I'm going to give you that. Go ahead. I'm going to give you a lesson here. When you when you attack pick and roll and they trap you, you must get devils, friend. You know what, Rich? Uh, not all one and done classes are created equal. And for every Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett class, or Anthony Davis, Michael Kidd, Gilchrist, some of these freshmen are not ready for prime time in terms of being guys that are one and done guys. College basketball is changing. With transfers being immediately eligible this year and going forward, one time eligibility, more and more people are going to get old and stay old. Some of the one and done guys are heading to the G League and playing for that uh, Ignite team. And I guarantee you that in the next couple of years, John Calipari is already doing it. 
with guys like Nate Sestina and Reed Travis and this year Olivier Saar, you're going to see Duke and Kentucky go the transfer route like everybody else. You just can't win consistently anymore with the type of one-and-done guys that are coming into college basketball. There's another this guy by win. Cade Cunningham. It's takeover time for Cade. No doubt. He has a sense of the moment. He, he came up big again. There's that trap again. You've got to attack the trap. And you've got to put a man in the middle of the, the court where you can throw it to him in the middle of the lane and create a little four on three. But Mike Miles said, I'm going to do it myself. How about this? Best friends since third grade, and they're going mano a mano in the Big 12. Yeah, great finish with the left hand by the young man from Lancaster. Take a look now. Watch King Cunningham get downhill. And P.J. Fuller with the four fouls is not going to commit the fifth. He gives him the angle. That's my line 16. right there. Yeah. Yeah, when you're even, Rich, you're leaving. P.J. Fuller doesn't get in front. He's on his side. Kate Cunningham said, I'm leaving. Little zone 16 now. 16 for Miles, 17 for Cunningham. Look at the zone now. We haven't seen much 2-3 zone tonight from TCU. Who's going to shoot the jump shot? Here's Boone. Nice up and under, and he gets fouled. Boy, I was surprised by that call. I thought Kevin Samuel, I didn't even know if there was any contact there. That was an up and under by Boone and Kevin Samuel is take a look now. Oh, oh gosh, I don't I, no, no. I mean did he did he clip him with the with the chicken wing? I just didn't see a lot of contact on that. That's the third foul on Fuller nonetheless, or make that on Samuel. Caleb Boone at the line, 71% free throw shooter, knocks his first one down tonight. Uh, you know, I, I, this doesn't happen often in college. We have, we have in the Big 12 some of the best officiating in the country, but sometimes you get penalized for being big. And it looks like a foul, but it was a good up and under by Boone. Give him credit. Caleb Boone knocks them both down, extends the Oklahoma State lead to four with 3.07 to go. And now Avery Anderson checking in for my point. You know, the best thing about this Oklahoma State roster, Rich, is that there's only one one and done guy on it. And there's a lot of young guys on and that in this freshman and sophomore classes are going to develop into really good players. They know each other really well. Yep. You see how they double team the ball anytime they smell pick and roll. And another turnover. Turnover number 20 for the TCU Horn Frogs. This was a team, Rich, that was up 13 in the first half. And the ball movement was singing like sting. Little zone. 25 points off of those 20 turnovers for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. James Anderson, the floater. That's a young guy that has become way more efficient as a sophomore. Remember last year, he was one for 26 from three. Look at the trapping. There's no answers for the trapping right now. And a foul is called as Miles runs into half of the Oklahoma State defense. Rich, what you have to do when you're trapped in pick and roll is your post player has to open up early. He can't roll all the way to the rim. Watch, take a look now. See, see, you see how Samuel leaves the ball? And you've got to put somebody in the middle of the court. We call it a short roll to catch the ball and play four versus three. Both teams in the bonus with 2.29 to go. And Miles misses the front end of the one and one. Cunningham lost it. Got it back. And a foul's called on TCU. That one's going to go on top. Well, this is our next NBA preseason matchup, Fran. We'll have the Warriors and the Kings from the Golden One Center in Sacramento. That's tomorrow at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the app. We're going to see some familiar Big 12 faces for the uh, Sacramento Kings. Buddy Heald, Tyrese Halliburton, their first-round pick, and... Uh, Jemias Ramsey, their second round pick out of Texas Tech. So uh, well stocked, the Sacramento Kings, with some guys that we've seen play in the past.
This Rondell so there is going to be a heck of a player, Rich. Yeah, Fran, you saw Cannon Cunningham next to Mike Boynton, who was talking to Cannon's younger brother, Cade Cunningham. Cade's Cannon in dynamite second half. Yeah, Cannon, a big reason why Cade came to Oklahoma State. He was on the staff, hired by Mike Boynton. Played for Larry Brown and Matt Doherty at SMU. Samuel Short from close range. It goes out of bounds. And is it going to be Oklahoma State ball? Looks like it'll stay TCU basketball. Kevin Samuel is 6 of 11 tonight, but he has, I promise you, all five of those misses were right around the rim. He's given up some points. Here's Nemhart off the There's catch and release. Play. Great set play. Double screen. RJ coming off the screen, did his work early, got behind the ball, down, and won the national title. That was a good NCAA tournament, Rich, for a lot of people. <laughs> Present company included. included. Yep. So here we go, 2-0-2 to go, some full court pressure. Yep, a little 2-2-1. Two, two, Still a possession game. It's not a comeback game yet. By that, I mean possessions. You need stops. Don't have to foul. TCU sitting in that zone. It starts out as a 1-1-3. One, one, You'll see it morph to a 2-3. Great angle right there. How do you can't give up the drives? Can't give that up. The follower, they're going to call it offensive goaltender. Very fortunate. is in the cylinder. Yeah, I think it's a good call. They're giving up too much dribble penetration. Take a look at Caleb Boone. If that ball's anywhere in the cylinder, straight to the ceiling. That was close. close, but I do think that end, a part of that ball was still inside that cylinder. Really close. Now, Rich. 130 time to go. 139 to go. They could check this out, and it looks yes, like they, they can. will, friend. Yes, they can. This is one of the things in the last two minutes of a game. You can, you can go to the monitor in the final two minutes of a game or the final two minutes of overtime to review a basket interference goaltending. You can review an, an out of bounds off of an opponent, or you can review the restricted arc. Let's take a look right here. They're going to check to see if they can clear, clearly see, and I think that ball is still in the cylinder. This should be easy. So they call it a no basket, as was the initial call. Stays 76 71. Jamie Dixon only has one timeout remaining. Possession arrow in favor of the Frogs, but they trail by five on the road, trying to get their first Big 12 win of the year. Oklahoma State, 6 0, riding a 10 game winning streak dating back to last year, trying to start off their Big 12 campaign in victorious fashion. I just don't like these pick and rolls because it just takes to inside out. Open to yeah. Samuel the rebound. Surrounded by orange jerseys and a foul is called. This is good news, bad news for TCU because they'll get two free throws, but Kevin Samuel, although he's improved from the line, still under 60% on the season. This is one of his weaknesses. He does a lot of good things. He's a terrific young big guy. But two free throws here would be absolutely optimum for the Frogs. And he's got the first 15 points. He's one off his season high is Kevin Samuel. Go back one year ago in their Big 12 opener on the road at Kansas State. Samuel credited with the tip-in at the buzzer to beat the Wildcats. He knocks oh, it both down. He ties the season high at 16. Yeah, that's a bonus. That is a bonus when you can get two from your big guy. Good job, Kevin. Guess who's got the ball, Rich? Number two in orange, Cade Cunningham. Gives it up to Lightning. Let's see if they go to the post. They're five out now. Ten on the shot clock. Anderson goes into Boone. And we're going the other way. An unforced error off the leg of Caleb Boone and out of bounds. That's still a three-possession game in terms of if, if uh, TCU wants to play fast, they'll get at least two more possessions. Obviously, the Cowboys will get one. 
but you got to stay aggressive. And again, I don't want to harp on this, but I, I get nervous if I saw a, a double team coming in my pick and rolls. They haven't been able to exploit attacking it. Spread the floor and let them drive. Here's Miles. Inside. Samuel dunks. Oh, man. Good feet inside. Excellent job by Jamie Dixon. Don't listen to me. Run your stuff. And that time they went high and low and got the big fella going. 18 points, 8 rebounds, 6 blocks for number 21 from the Horn Frogs, Kevin Samuel. And he oh, brings man. the Frogs to within one. For Duke basketball, of course, ever since then, Rich, it's been uh, an embarrassment of riches. And, uh, I, I got to tell you, like, I have no doubt that Coach K could care less about the two losses last week when he talked about basketball and the pandemic. No doubt in my mind he spoke from the heart. What is Cade going to do now? Cunningham with the ball. Under 30 seconds to go and his team up one. Drive, jump stop, no whistle. Here come the Frogs. They take a lead with a bucket. Good Miles. kick out. Ah, uh, they passed up shots. Ten seconds to go. The big shot goes down. Oh, Great Jay boom. Nembhard. Rich, that was a terrific possession. It came in transition, so they got Oklahoma State going backwards. They never were six seconds. It's going to be a real chess match. You see three-quarter court pressure now from the Frogs, but you cannot let the ball get to the paint. It's in the hands of Kate Cunningham. Five seconds to go. Cunningham pulls up and misses the jumper. TCU uses a nine to close this one out and win it on the road. 77-76 over Oklahoma State. Great defensive possession by TCU.